Okay, so today I will show you that feminists are complete liars in every regard, okay? So recently I have um, had a discussion with a f feminist under Midwestern Marxist video. Um, and she, uh, Miss Morgan Vivo, she was basically claiming that women are more in poverty than men, okay? This is a very common uh, feminist talking point that women are so poor and they are below the poverty line and they're these poor victims that are so poor compared to men, right? And um, I'm going to destroy this whole feminization of poverty argument, this whole narrative, because this is a complete lie, okay? And they're very de deceptive as usual these feminists okay and i will also show that women are essentially the leisure class okay they receive all the benefits and men uh, work for for those benefits right M men work and women receive okay just like the capitalists they they receive the profits and the workers work okay this is this is what it comes down to and th this will be a very long video because i have to go into much detail and too much data on this um and i'm also a little bit sick so i'm saying that up front but i will do this video anyway because it's very important it's a very important topic to destroy this narrative of feminization of poverty okay and I will read you this comment that this feminist Miss Morgan Vivo made, okay? Mr. Pink and Yellow correctly pointed out how uh, consumer spending is mostly driven by women, okay? And uh, Miss Morgan basically said to that that the point doesn't fall flat because that has nothing to do with my point. You've deflected again, but since you bring it up the consumer spending is done by women because women spend more on household items for the entire family not just themselves this actually supports my original argument again the research proves pr provides the context for all of this you are clearly an ideologue who fishes for information to confirm your own bias okay first of all your own bias is not an argument everybody has biases so this is a non argument uh, but the claim that uh, women doing most consumer spending is supporting her argument is nonsense because if you if you uh, have actually control over the wealth that the husband earns right you have as a woman you have the say over someone else's money then you're not under poverty okay even if you don't earn this money yourself, but you actually control this money. So it's like th this already fails logically, right? But it's also a lie that uh, consumer spending is done mostly by women because women spend more on household items for the entire family. I'm going to disprove that, okay? Can easily disprove that, actually. Okay. So, but yeah, let's get into the poverty claims first okay so how is poverty actually defined because these feminists are saying oh according to the census data the census bureau on poverty uh, shows that women have uh, w women are more poor than than men according to census bureau data but what actually goes into that data right so this article um, goes into that and it says, in counting the incomes of poor persons, the Census Bureau actually excludes all, almost all welfare assistance. Some 75% of welfare spending in the U.S. is in the form of non-cash assistance. Yet the Census Bureau ignores all non-cash benefits in determining the income of poor persons non-cash programs such as food stamps public housing energy assistance school lunch and breakfast programs and the women infant and children's food program are excluded from the census bureau 
poverty calculation entirely. Okay, so basically, this Census Bureau data cannot tell us uh, actually the living standards, right, because they exclude these non-cash benefits, and these non-cash benefits mostly go to women, okay? So food stamps mostly goes to women, public housing and energy assistance, and even ha has this here, women, infants, and children's food program, right, is already in the name that it goes to women, okay? So these non-cash benefits mostly goes to women, but it's not captured by the poverty statistics. So these poverty statistics are a poor gauge on the actually li actual living standards of of these women. Okay. So and here you can see women receive most uh, public housing assistance. Women had seventy five percent of households served by the HUD rental systems program. Okay. And here's also Pew Research data who received entitlements, percentage in each group who ever received benefits from one or more of these government programs, social security, Medi Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, unemployment benefits, or food stamps. And you can see in this graph that women receive more of these welfare benefits than, than men do. Okay, and some of this is captured by the poverty income statistic, census, census data statistic, but not all of it, like food stamps is not in there, and uh, Medicaid, uh, and stuff like that, right? So these census data statistics are not telling the whole story, right? And here's also a great Reddit post that goes into uh, a lot of these things um, for example child support is double counted and alimony pay payments is double counted as father's income which inflates the data on father's income right so if if a father um, pays child support to the mother then that payment is actually counted as the father's income and but not count, not yeah. It's it's counted as the father's income. So this inflates the father's income artificially, right? Which actually should be subs subtracted from uh, the father's income, right? So let me read you this. The second reason the poverty statistics are trash is because the Census Bureau often double counts child support and alimony payments. This article it references a uh, Wall Street Journal article. Uh, explains there is an, an, an anom anomaly in the way some census data account for transfer of money usually to women from men via child support and alimony. In determining whether a household is above or below the pov poverty line, child support and alimony, pay, uh, alimony received always count towards income. But the census sometimes does and sometimes does not deduct child support and alimony paid. In other words, for some census reports, the same money is counted as both parents' income, which inflates the evident income of the man, usually supporting an ex-wife or custodial mother. In other words, the Census Bureau ignores dad's child support and alimony payments when determining his net income. Let's look at one hypothetical ex yeah, okay we don't need the hypothetical example the point is clear i think point is very clear so this census bureau that this miss morgan vivo constantly references a uh, census bureau data that she references is, is total nonsense because again how they define poverty is not the full story because if you want to talk about poverty you also have to talk about the actual actual living standards not just the the cash right and the the cash that husbands have more on hand is because they work more as i will show later right so for example in massachusetts in 1988 a welfare mother with three children could receive welfare benefits in the form of af 
the sea food stamps, public housing, Medicaid and school lunch and breakfast programs, costing the taxpayer 18765 per year. The poverty income threshold for such a family that year was $12,092. But the family would still be counted as poor by the Census Bureau. Right. So it's it's a bullshit statistic, okay? Um, and again, these these benefits, food stamps, public housing, Medicaid, school lunch and breakfast programs, they mostly go to women, okay? So if we actually include that, it would probably show men being more poor, but we get to that. Um, so now let's get into... Uh, the earnings that actually go to women, okay, that the hu the husband earns the money and those earnings go to women, and then this is true worldwide, okay. Many Asian wives now hold purse purse strings. Ismail Gio no longer pockets the money he earns as the man in charge of protocol for the government of Gorontalo in Indonesia. It's it all goes straight into his wife's bank account. In yet another sign that times are changing in parts of Asia, such as Gorontalo, a predominantly Muslim province in Sulawesi, more and more wives control the purse strings. A new ruling that went into effect there last month required all married men who are civil servants to hand over their monthly salaries to their wives this is enshrined into law holy shit wow in other asian countries such as japan and even china wives already control their family's internal affairs okay so women in asia they pocket the money it goes straight into the wife's bank account okay and also, poor men in South Korea like, are likely single and childless, okay? As those with money get to have it all. So, women deselecting low-status men, basically, with no income. This was also something that this feminist woman denied, that low-status poor men, uh, that they get deselected. She denied that. There's actually more than enough evidence of that. Okay, here's more evidence. Men from poor backgrounds twice as likely to be single. Okay, so poverty means social isolation and deselection from women for, for men. Okay, and here's also this study being more educated and earning more increases romantic interest data from uh, 1.8 million online data from 24 nations. And resource acqu acquisition ability improved the attention received by men almost 2.5 times that of women. Okay, so uh, earnings are very uh, er earnings of, of, of the man are very important for women. Okay, they deselect men who don't earn enough and who are poor. Okay, and that is because. Women are driven by status and wealth rather than wanting babies. Okay, this is a very important Oxford research study that shows that uh, women in more capitalist countries are more likely to seek their own fortune and mate with someone with social standing before starting a family. Right. So this this proves completely that uh, what what. Midwestern Marx was saying about how women in capitalist countries uh, are less likely to to um, leave the husband or something because the, the, this study points out how capitalist countries there are lower birth rates and uh, women are less uh, likely to reproduce they, they're actually more status driven okay they they are willing to forego reproduction um, 
to seek a man with higher status, okay? Uh, to go for a man with higher status or to uh, sit in the universities, become educated and then check up with a man who's more higher status even, even than they are, okay? In terms of economics. So, yeah, and again, women control most consumer spending, yeah, so, and this worldwide, but women make up uh, more than half of the U.S. population and control influence 85% of consumer spending, okay. Now, this feminist, uh, Miss Morgan Vivo, she claimed that this is all spent on on household items for the whole family. This is bullshit. Okay, so here's what this is spent on: is spent on new homes, PCs, vacations, healthcare, new cars, bank accounts, food, pharmaceuticals. Okay, so new homes. That means women also. Uh, w women. Uh, they live in those homes, right? So basically, the husband earns the money and the woman decides what to do with that money and chooses the home, okay? How, how is that poverty, right? How is that poverty? And also, PCs, right? Consumer electronics, smartphones. Women also make up the most consumer spending in that, okay? That is not household items for the whole family, iPads and smartphones, okay? And if you doubt those statistics, by the way, those... Here, here's a good article uh, that goes into how uh, these statistics are created or how, how, how these statistics come about, right? And 80% of consumer spending is driven by women. This was true even during the Great Depression. Even during the Great Depression, women were responsible for 75 to 85 uh, percent of consumer spending in the year 1930s, right? Even during a economic depression, Great Depression, women still were in the driver's seat economically when it comes to consumer spending, right? So they were receiving their husband's money, right? Or like the little money that he had, right? And they were spending it, okay? And this was uh, true back then and it's true today, okay? And also, what, what is the money actually spent on? Again, she claims that it's mostly household items for, for, the, for the family. This is complete bullshit, okay? Let, let me read you this. Modern females often juggle between multiple roles and the factors influencing their consumption decisions are also more diverse than ever. The internet has brought great convenience to female consumers, enabling them to access product information through various channels, no longer limited to e-commerce platforms and peer recommendations. For instance, purchases through planting seeds and content content recommendations on e-commerce platforms are becoming increasingly common. At the same time, purchases for self-pampering among women, women is getting more popular. They are also more willing to pay for practical and exquisite products. According to the 2022 Women's Consumption Trend Report, the proportion of self-enjoyment consumption among females significantly increased in 2021. The amount spent on self-enjoyment consumption also surpassed that of family-orientated consumption, accounting for 54% uh, of total spending. Okay, let me repeat that. Self-enjoyment consumption also surpassed that of family oriented consumption, okay? So this bullshit that uh, women drive most consumer spending because they spend it on the family is total bullshit, okay? They spend it also on themselves significantly more actually, okay? So, and here's even more evidence, right? Here's 
article female consumers and their leisure spending in a digital world okay women love to explore the world go on trips spend time with friends colleagues and she also loves spending on herself and going to physical fitness activities restaurants and movies okay restaurants and movies okay oh here's more evidence global luxury markets bigger biggest driving force Chinese women Chinese women drive the global luxury market okay so yeah this this nonsense that women do most consumer spending because they spend it on the family nonsense but even even if it was true it's still the husband's money it's still the husband's money and they that they decide what it's spent on and if it's even if it was for the whole family she's included in that family so she's also benefiting from this okay so it's not like oh the husband makes the money but he spends it on himself and leaves the woman only the breadcrumbs right but it's actually the husband makes the money and the woman benefits okay and spends it on consumer luxury items mostly okay this is what's actually going on okay now also these poverty uh debates or women are so poor they sent around this this wage gap lie this gender wage gap lie that feminists constantly uh talk about so let let's debunk that bullshit okay uh so yeah f first of all um uh, women are less in manage management roles because men have to uh men have to uh get status so they are forced to compete with each other to uh rise up to these management ceo type roles right and women don't have to do that so they aspire less to that position okay so a meta-analysis of six decades of studies show that women aspire to leadership roles less often than men do, okay? Men want powerful jobs more than women do, okay? And why is that? Because men are actually forced to get status because otherwise women deselect men, okay? That That is the reason. And women don't have to be CEOs, right? and they, they, they in, in order to to have value in our society okay also this article goes into how um gender pay pay gap is a complete myth it's a feminist lie because uh men work more hours than women and all kinds of other factors right I, I'm, I'm not gonna go into this whole article you can read it yourself there are many kinds of factors here's also a great article are pay equity policies justified by bruce gillay uh, also goes into the literature on that I, i'm gonna read from this a large amount of literature seeks to decompose this raw gender uh, wage difference in order to determine whether there's a policy problem the decomposition composition usually begins with easily identified work related characteristics such as the job itself, senior seniority, responsibility, experience, and qualifications, leaving an unexplained residual. Sophia Seong, John Lee, and Ju Wee Kim show that South Korea's large difference in pay between genders mainly reflects the strong importance of seniority pay, which favors men who re remain in jobs longer as well as the strongly gendered division of men and women in regular and irregular jobs, factors which together account for virtually all of the pay difference. In countries where the raw difference is lower, the proportion explained by work-related uh, characteristics is less. The work-related characteristics portion was one-third or 4.8 percentage points of the overall 13.2 per percent gender wage difference across 26 countries of europe in 2014 
Melissa Moiser fi finds that the uh, work-related characteristics portion made up of education, location, age, job tenure, union status, public or private sector, occupation and industry was also about a third or 4.1 percentage points of the uh, 30 uh, percent uh, gender wage difference in Canada in 2017. Pay equity advocates cite the unexplained re re residual as evidence of sexism and thus a policy problem caused by a market failure. Quote, while some compensation disparities may be attributable to differences in occupation, skill, experience and other legitimate factors, the U.S. Equal Employment o uh, Opportunity Commission asserted in 2021 not all disparities can be explained by such factors and pay inequality may be the result of discrimination. Yeah, may be not also, right? More assertively, two U.S. federal government analysts insisted in 2015 that there is no broadly accepted methodology that is able to attribute the entirety of the raw wage gap to factors other than gender. So they basically asserted that it's an opinion. Blywise, Frey and Qatar write that bias and discrimination likely drive more than the two-thirds unexplained residual. However, more refined measures at the sectoral and organizational levels find that productivity-related factors can explain most of the residual. The work-related characteristics used in the studies above usually leave out what Richard Bayer, Travis Henserki and Adrian Thomas call productivity-related employment inputs, such as innovation, hours worked and flexibility. As Epstein summarized the literature, quote, it is just wrong to assume that any unmeasured variation should be attributed to some undocumented form of discrimination. At the most general level in the US economy, gender neutral jobs tend to have the highest gender wage difference and the lowest level of gender discrimination because of the dominance of productivity related employment inputs factors in such fields. Working hours may alone explain much of the difference. In the US from 2015 to 2019, 35% uh, of white men worked 45 or more hours per week compared to 18% of white women. Using a measure of both work-related characteristics and productivity relevant employment inputs in a study of uh, 317 managers uh, in a commercial construction company in the United States, Bayer, Henzerski and Thomas find no unexplained gender difference. A study of Boston area trained drivers likewise found that the earnings gap can be explained by female operators taking fewer hours of overtime and more hours of unpaid time off than male operators. This explains why companies that introduce bonus pay for objectively measured performance do not experience a narrowing of the gender pay difference, as Enmui Moon and Naomi Kodama confirm in a study of over 383,000 employees from around 391 companies in Japan from 1997 uh, to 2009. So basically, the work-related characteristics and the pro productivity-relevant employment inputs can explain this gender wage gap. Okay, women work less hours, they're less flexible, 
uh, less innovative um, and take few fewer hours over time uh, they take more hours of unpaid time off okay all kinds of other factors that the gender wage gap uh, is due to discrimination there's no evidence of that basically okay the literature is very clear on this and when you look at married men versus mar married women okay you can clearly see that married men work substantially more hours pretty much all countries than married women okay so if a woman gets married her working hours substantially drop while the working hours of the man either stay the same or even increase okay so basically it's only the man in the marriage working okay and the woman working at best ha uh, half time not full time you can also see it here uh, estimates of population exposed to long working hours okay overworking and it's the blue bars indicate men across all ages ma make up the majority of those who work long o uh, work over time okay exposed to long working hours okay and this is related to to heart disease burden on men okay you can also see the uh, scheme with heart disease and stroke uh it's mainly men okay you can clearly see it here and if you want to tell me now oh but what about unpaid labor uh, house housework and all of that right fathers overall work time including unpaid work at home is actually two hours more than that of mothers right so even if you want to make that argument that falls flat but unpaid labor at home is total bullshit anyway it's it's not the same as working for a capitalist okay because if you do housework but you live in the same house you directly benefit from it okay so it's it's nonsense this unpaid labor bullshit that feminists talk about is total bullshit okay we can also look again at the ambition okay because this feminist was claiming oh the the mothers they, they actually they want to work but the workplace is structured in such a way that it's that mothers are at a disadvantage right but as this report points out women are also more likely than men to voluntarily step off the career ladder okay voluntarily you see that word voluntarily women have agency okay okay so nobody forces them to voluntarily step off the career la ladder to become mothers okay but uh, it is never considered that actually fathers could do the same right and the woman could work right so the woman actually could be the quote-unquote breadwinner right and not the father and the father could take care of the child being at home while the woman works or there could be a 50 50 split so that both parties work but they, as an overall they have to work less right this is never considered right but it's actually women enforcing that okay because women reject house husbands okay house husbands backlash as high-flying wives ditch men they wanted to stay at home okay women want husbands to work okay women prefer their husbands to be the breadwinners okay and even female students okay financially secure female students who have careers ahead of them want a successful man instead of a career okay so you cannot make this this claim that women are these damsels in distress who are forced into this role of uh, 
of uh, choosing a, a rich husband because they're so poor they have no other choice, right? Because even financially secure female students who are most likely feminists also, right? And who are who have uh, careers ahead of them, well-paid careers ahead of them, who are very privileged, even they want a successful man instead of a career, a higher status man instead of a career, okay? They don't want to work, okay? This article also goes into that, okay? Only 10% of British part-time uh, female workers sur surveyed expressed an interest in working full time okay only 10 percent among women at home with children less than 18 only 16 percent less than one in six say they want to work outside the home full time which drops to 12 percent if children are young among at home mothers only 22 percent say the increase in working mothers with young children is a good thing for society. Okay? Women don't want to work. Okay? They could work, actually, but they they want the man to work. Okay? So this, this uh, complaining and these gaslighting feminists who say, oh, men work more and uh, uh, men earn more, I mean, Right, men earn more, and the poor mothers are at the dis dis disadvantage in the labor market. Even though they themselves choose that they don't want to work more, right, and they want the the man to earn all that money that they spent. For women with children who do work full time outside the home, more than half want to change to working part time or not working at all. Fully 94 94% of women who have reduced their hours or taking significant time off work after having a child say they are glad they did this. Women are 38% uh, more likely to file divorce if she works more than her husband than vice versa and 29% percent more likely to divorce if they have had to increase the number of hours worked outside the home in the last five years. The Atlantic reported two factors are often obscured in the public conver conversation devoted to women, work and family. First, the vast majority of married mothers don't want to work full time. Second, married mothers who are able to cut back at work to accommodate, accommodate their family's needs tend to be happier. The news cycle is stuck in a lean-in loop, but new data shows mothers report more happiness when they can lean homeward. Okay, 80% of women said they would ostracize a man who failed to provide for his family, quote-unquote, as he should. Okay, so it's women pushing the work on man, right? But then these feminist scumbags claim, oh, women are in poverty because they earn less. Yeah, if you don't work, you earn less. Yes, you earn less. But even that earned money that the man makes goes to women. Feminists in particular have repeatedly complained about declining alimony, men paying women, so uh, men paying so that women do not have to support themselves okay feminists want traditional gender roles okay in a 1985 roper survey only 10 percent of women declared that a husband should turn down a very good job in in another city so the wife can continue her job an overview of multiple studies across Europe concluded that only 14 per to 20 percent of women aged 16 plus are work-centered, which defines as committed to work or equivalent activities. The author concludes feminists constantly complain that 
men are not doing their fair share of domestic work. The reality is that most men already do more than their fair share. And as factual data replaces re uh, received wisdom, several well-entrenched feminist myths have been overturned. Men do substantially more hours of paid work. Okay. So, men work more hours, women don't want to work, okay? That's why women earn less money, which is irrelevant since they get the money from the husband, right? And also f uh, all kinds of welfare goods from the state, okay? And women winning the lottery sends them off to divorce court, right? So, if a woman uh, gets the money then she know then she discards the husband okay men on the other hand stay married this tells you volumes that basically the the main reason why women get married is for for the for the money right and they initiate most divorce right and they do that because they can't cash out with all kinds of payments to her right Increasing pressure on U.S. men for income in order to find a spouse. We find that me that for men, the importance of income in predicting ever being married increases steadily over time. Okay. So again, women want a wealthy husband. Okay, a high status, higher status, wealthy husband. Okay, they don't want to work, and they receive the benefits. Okay. The myth of deadbeat dads. In the largest federally funded study ever conducted on the subject, psychologist Sanford Braver demonstrated that very few married fathers abandon their children. Overwhelmingly, it is mothers, not fathers, who are walking away from marriages and thus separating children from their fathers. Okay. Other studies have reached similar or more dramatic conclusions. The system of collecting child support is no longer one of requiring men to take responsibility. It was never that for the offspring, as most people believe. The combination of no fault divorce and the new enforcement, uh, the new enforcement law, has created a system that pays mothers to divorce their husbands and remove children from their fathers. Okay? It allows wives to to keep a sizable portion of her former spouse's income. Okay? So, women cash out during divorce. Okay? There is profits to be made. Okay? Also, this article proves that the feminization of poverty uh, narrative that feminists espouse is total bullshit, okay? According to the U.S. Census Bureau, a single female head of household with no husband's husband present, present with children represents 50% of poor families in the city, a city with uh, 34 0.5% of residents below the poverty line from 2006 to 2011. The difference between the overwhelming gap between single female heads of household and single male heads of household, which represents less than 10% of the poor, is simple. The children. The feminist argument here would be, that's exactly right. We've created a societal expectation for women to take on the burden of motherhood and our cultural attitudes have saddled women with economic li liabilities. The reality, however, is that each child is a cash bonus for those unemployed women. That's not a judgment, it's simply how our current system operates. There's a clear trend between welfare programs providing for women who have children out of wedlock and more unemployed women having children out of wedlock. So basically, uh, a woman get, getting uh, welfare payments, cashing out to have children out of wedlock. Okay, 
So this feminization of poverty nonsense is just that. It's nonsense. Okay? It's a bullshit victimhood narrative. Okay? Welfare programs, welfare programs make it relatively easy for single mothers, right, to live and to have a comf comfortable life. Okay? Even if on paper, according to Census Bureau, there's uh like lower incomes on paper because again it's the man who works longer hours okay and again if you want to talk about parental leave there's no uh, paternity leave there's no uh, paid maternity leave in the united states guaranteed for for each parent right so the same goes for fathers right but they only talk about maternity leave but never paternity leave right so you cannot make this argument right because again house husbands are not welcomed by women okay so they're not getting uh, parental leave either okay also let me bring bring this up okay because we're talking about poverty women actually wage economic war against men okay and I can't prove this Okay, so this study can group identity explain the gender gap in the recruitment process. Female applicants are more likely to receive callbacks for an interview. We, are, we also see that in our sample, the majority of contact persons responsible for the recruitment process are female. That is not just in the sample, this is generally true. More importantly, we find that if recruiter and applicant are of the same gender then the likelihood that the applicant will be invited for an interview increases so basically women are the majority of uh, recruit recruiters for for job interviews right and they favor women which means they exclude men from from interviews driving men into unemployment okay this is what happens on a structural level and moreover, female teachers give male pupils lower marks, okay? They're biased against male students, female teachers, okay? Okay, feminist academia is pushing men out of higher education, okay? And we see that men are, because of this, held back in higher education. They are not enrolling in college and they're not completing the co college education, okay? The women are dominating higher education and this drives men into unemployment and poverty, right? And lower paying jobs. Research indicates that men are more likely to suffer adverse health consequences as a result of being unemployed than women, okay? And this is also a very important uh, article to disprove this this bullshit notion of feminization of poverty uh, men are more poor than women okay male poverty increases according to US Census Bureau report okay men are also the majority of uninsured okay and males living below poverty are often ignored. People who live below poverty are particularly susceptible to the disease of despair, homelessness, uh, poor educational outcomes, and heart attacks, to name a few categories that impact the poor. All these car categories disproportionately impact males, with males uh, representing 70% to 80% of opioid, suicide and alcohol deaths at the larger percentage of heart attacks, it is accurate to assess that there are at least an additional 100,000 more males than females who were living below the poverty line in 2020 and were not counted in the 2021 statistics as their poverty in 2020 
contributes to their deaths in 2020. So men die earlier than women and are thus not counted in the poverty statistics. Okay. Although we do not have the exact numbers, it would probably be accurate to assess that at least 400,000 to 500,000 more males than females living below the poverty line died over the course of five years in just a handful of measures mentioned above. In 2020, males accounted for 62% uh, of heart attack deaths according to the Kaiser Family Foundation data retrieved from the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, that's 170,000 uh, more males than female cardiac, cardiac deaths. Uh, researchers who studied the association between country socioeconomic factors and heart failure mortality and compared it with, co uh, with heart disease mortality learned that the overall percentage poverty uh, statistically explained 30% uh, of the observed variation in heart failure mortality rates. Males systematically are not the equal beneficiaries of certain social safety nets and policies. There are more, more services for females living in poverty than males. Okay, shelters, uh, food programs for women and children and other federal and state assistance programs provide fewer uh, resources for boys and men as well, excluding many boys and men when distinguishing between poverty guidelines and poverty thresholds. The el eligibility outcomes perpetuate disparities because there are more state and federal agencies educate educating policymakers about girls and women. The White House Gender Policy Council, the Office of Women's Health, California Commission on Women and Girls, Washington Commission on Women and other agencies at the state and federal level exclude boys and men, meaning the outcomes of boys and men are less likely to find a place at the table of policymakers. The same has happened in our education system. And as of wedlock bir births are on the rise and parental rights are marginalized in the courts, there is an e even greater concern for boys without fathers. Fathers who do not receive shared custody may drift into poverty as the financial burden becomes even greater. And children without fathers are much more likely to engage in drug use and crime, have poor educational outcomes and live below the poverty line. So, as you can see, these Census Bureau statistics don't cover a lot of males who are actually poor, right? Understating male poverty and creating this illusion that more women are poor than men. Miss Morgan Vivo, okay? So yeah, I completely destroyed your bullshit. I have proven that uh, m that first of all, uh, women uh, deselect poor men. Okay, this is what she disputed. I have completely debunked uh, her rebuttal to that. Of course, women deselect poor men. Okay, poor men are more likely to be single and childless. Okay, I destroyed her point about the Census Bureau showing that women are more poor than men. These statistics don't include all the relevant uh, factors and all the government benefits that women get more than men. Okay, These, fac these statistics also don't show men who actually died uh, from poverty-related diseases. Okay, If there are more men dying than women and women remain then this creates a distorted picture okay and yeah and and women also they do most of the consumer spending okay so they spend the husband's money this what, what she said they spend more on household items for their entire family is bullshit i've just proven that as well okay so 
point being is women are not more poor than men okay women may earn less money uh, than men but this is because they work less okay and they want the husband to earn the money okay they don't want to work themselves okay and they reject this concept of, of house uh, house husbands right and they also don't want to work the same hours as men okay they don't want to split the responsibilities okay for, for the household in terms of working hours okay and they want to spend the husband's money okay it's that simple it's that simple so they receive the money from the husband and from and they received government goodies okay so this notion of poverty,ization of uh, f f f feminization of poverty is, is total bullshit okay total bullshit more men than women are poor okay period <laughs>